Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and today I'd like to talk to you about this, which is the Nico Queen Laying System. Um, should I say Queen Laying? It's uh, it's the Queen Rearing System, really, but this is the laying cage. Okay, on oh, Nico, by the way, the to my American friends, the correct pronunciation is Nico, not Nikat. Okay, Nico, got it? Good. Right. So, how does this work? Okay, the great thing about this particular design, the Nico, as opposed to say the Genta or one of the other types, um, is that this particular box has a really neat little extra bit, which is this. This is a queen introduction cage built into the box. That's a really useful thing to have because you can introduce a queen to a colony at the same time as getting her to lay eggs in these little cells. So, a typical way of using this box would be uh, you've got a queenless colony and you want to introduce a new queen and you also want to take eggs from her to rear new queens with. Okay, that's a simple uh, kind of scenario. And what you do is not assemble it the way I've done it here. Um, I shall explain that in a second. What I did there, by the way, what I, the way I'd had it set up there was the queen uh, excluder side was on the wrong side of the box. Silly mistake, all right? Um, once you've got it loaded with these little queen cap things, which, in, by the way, a really neat way of getting them in and out is with a pair of spring-loaded tweezers. Trying to do it with your fingers, unless you've got really tiny fingers, is almost impossible. Tweezers, great things. Okay, so let me just get the other side off this box and I'll show you what's what I did wrong. Um, the other side of this box is the back, for want of a better word, and it's just clear plastic, right? And that goes on this side. Uh, I'll just show you, if I can, a close-up of the queen introduction cage. There it is, that's where the queen goes, and that little bit there is what you pack with um, what Americans call queen candy, which is basically a very um, firm form of fondant. Uh, that goes into that little square there, and that enables bees to come through this hole here from the other side and gradually reduce, uh, sorry, release the queen. So the clear side with the plug in it goes, the plug is on the outside obviously, and it goes like this over its little pins, and you close it up like that and that holds all those little cells in position if you're lucky there's 110 of them and you do not want them spilt all over the floor right now this little plug here is where you put the queen actually I'm f I'm just checking to make sure yes I have got that on the right way now okay so that's now on so the queen's gonna get popped in through this little hole here and immediately you put a plug on it um, if I was using this particular cage right now, that would be full of queen candy. Okay, we flip the cage over. On this side is a pattern of hexagons, and um, some of the most of the hexagons are actually closed off. They're dummies, as it were, and and they would represent, if you like, capped brood, as far as the queen's concerned. The holes are, are go the holes go through to the um, cells the other side and those are the ones we want the queen to lay into. So on this side we have a queen, in this case really it's more of a queen includer because we don't want the queen to wriggle out of that cage until she's laid it out and that's obviously going to have a cap on it as well. If you weren't introducing a new queen you can just pop the queen in there. So if it's the queen that's already in the hive she can go in that side, makes no odds. Um, Okay, so what I've discovered is about this, uh, it's really useful and it works much better if you uh, condition the cage a couple of days at least before using it. In other words, you put it into a frame and that's what these, uh, what I've done here actually is put it onto a, this is a top bar of my quadratic hive. So I can actually use this in the quadratic hive and I'll show you that some other time. Um, I've actually screwed a wooden bar to the top of it with the screws that, that uh, fit the holes that are already in the plastic box. And I've had another set of um, screws up here with pilot holes. This can be fitted to any frame, okay? So any, so it can be a National or a Langstroth or whatever you've got, uh, even a Warre, you could, um, you can screw this to and put it into the hive 
for at least two or three days before you introduce the queen so that the bees can get used to it and I've heard several ways of doing this some people smear it with honey um, I just tend to spray it with a very light um, sugar syrup just uh, in, inside there and it, get, it, it attracts the bees there and they clean it and do all the things that bees do to cells just to make them ready for the queen to lay into um, a couple of tips uh, also do buy if you're going to go this way the Nico system um, do buy the original proper Nico box don't buy the cheap Chinese rubbish um, I've had uh, nasty experiences with the, with the cheap Chinese ones they're badly made that they don't perform properly the the last one I got um, as a test the Queen Excluder was sort of concave and it yeah, it's just rubbish really um, and also another thing to look out for is um, these cell cups although they look identical uh, the different people make them um, although they all look the same and they all have the same measurements when it actually comes down to it uh, they're all they're going to be plugged into um, cell bars like this they're going to be plugged into these little cell cups and they need to be a good fit because obviously if they're loose they're going to fall out and falling out queen cells is not a great thing to have when you're trying to raise queens so um, my advice is to buy your um, buy the proper kit to start with if you need to add to it or buy replacements make sure that they are compatible with the stuff you've already got um, unfortunately the only way to find out is by buying it and testing it but you might end up with two sets of gear one that fits uh, these cream coloured cups for example which came with the original kit and you might find that the um, one supply one or more suppliers of these little brown cups uh, don't actually fit these properly and they, they're actually a loose fit and they'll only fit the ones that come with it which tend to be orange or yellow in colour that I found so anyway that's just a warning sometimes things don't fit and the last point that you want to find that out is when you're actually trying to raise your queens so um, enough natter about this so it's a very simple little gadget um, and it's important to just do those things properly just condition it properly and fit it to the frame properly um, there, are, there are various things you can read online about having building wooden frames around it and, and letting them build comb beside it before they use it I've not found that that matters that, that much the only important thing is that the, the bees have got to it a couple of days before the queen has okay and in this box right here I've got a colony uh, there's they've got dry sugar in the feeder there and there's quite a few bees up there what's happened with this colony let me just take the camera over this way for a moment um, so if we look at the front of it you can see that it is a polynuke at the bottom with an extender on it and the extender is a brood size extender so it takes the same frames as in the, in the polynuke and on top of that is a feeder and a lid now the story is that this colony was queenless uh, for various reasons we won't bore you with and I wanted to introduce to them a queen that I had already previously reduced uh, sorry introduced to a small nucleus colony and so what I did was I have used the um, I've used the Nico cage as an introduction cage but with a with the original nucleus colony on top of the queenless colony I'll try and make that make more sense in a moment the top box had the nucleus colony and the queen the bottom box had the original queenless colony and what I've done is a what's generally known as a newspaper combine in this case it was a sugar paper combine at the same time as putting the queen into a Nico cage in order for her to lay eggs so what I should have here with any luck and I really hope it's worked is I should have a colony that has integrated that has accepted this new queen and the queen has laid in the Nico cage I'm, I'm less certain about the last bit because 
she's only been there for a couple of days and sometimes it takes a little longer so I'm just going to check her now and I'll do it in front of the camera and you can see in that cage running around I hope you can see this there is a marked black queen uh, she's she is charging around a little bit so it's not, not, not be easy to see her she's got a yellow dot on her she's, she's this year's queen and uh, she's in amongst those bees there so that means that this introduction has been successful she might just have gone through the back into this uh, into the uh, introduction cage she might be a bit shy yeah, she's in the front I saw her the dot look out for the yellow dot anyway so we know the Queen's in here what we don't know yet is whether she's actually laid any eggs and so to find that out um, I found that I need to hold this up to the light so I'm just going to go off camera a bit and hold it up to the light and looking into the cage I would say no she hasn't actually laid any eggs in the cage yet that's okay though. My main concern was that she'd been introduced cleanly and if I can tip the camera again you can see down between the combs you can see the remains of the um, sugar bag paper that I used to combine them. Okay and I just re just as I arrived I saw a bee flying off with a little streamer of paper uh, which is quite amusing. Though there, there you go, now if I hold that there you should be able to see the Queen, she's in the bottom corner there and she's running around and she's clearly been accepted. So as an introduction cage this has definitely worked. Um, she hasn't laid into it yet but I'm going to put her back. As you can see the bees are nice and quiet. Um, these aren't, as you can see, these aren't uh, black bees, they're, they're kind of local, uh, quite peaceful local mongrels. Um, but as her, as she starts laying, her eggs are going to come through and um, her genetics will take over and this will turn into a black bee colony. So, a nice quiet colony, they're quite content now they've got a queen, they were quite agitated before. And uh, there's a couple of dead bees on the corner there I'll get rid of. And so we've got a successful introduction. Um, we're going to have to wait at least another day uh, for her to lay into that cage, but that's okay, we can do that. Uh, I'm just going to give them a light dusting with pure water. There's nothing in this water spray. And that just gets the heads down so I can safely put this on. One of the... Um, small disadvantages of this uh, polynuke system I found is that because there are quite large areas of polystyrene you can see here quite large areas of polystyrene that actually come into contact with each other it, it, the, the probability of killing bees is higher than perhaps it is with ordinary woodwork uh, so it's just something to watch out for but the water spray enables you to clear bees away from the edges quite effectively mostly hmm. So, okay, um, this has just got a rather grubby plastic cover on it, and uh, but otherwise dry sugar, and the bees are just helping themselves as they need to. So the next stage of the Nico system, I'll just crank the camera back again. The, the brown cells, when the, there we go, when the um, queen has laid eggs into these brown cells, the next stage is to, with your tweezers, I strongly recommend these, um, here we are, spring loaded tweezers, they're sprung shut, so you just have to pop them open, grab the cell, and the cell is firmly held even though you're not exerting any energy. Quite important that, because trying to get these out of here with your fingers, really difficult. Tweezers, dead easy. Get yourself some tweezers. So, 
the great thing about this system is that you don't have to graft. Now, I know some people love grafting, some people really think grafting is the best thing ever. Um, I hate grafting. I hate poking around those tiny little larvae that I can hardly see. I much prefer this system because the queen lays directly into this little cup and the larva can then be placed in the cell holder like so and the larva itself is never touched by human hand or, or a paintbrush or a, a Chinese grafting tool or whatever it is that you use. So I much prefer the queen to be able to lay directly into these cell cups. I can take the cell cups out, pop them into the cell holder. When it's full, that goes straight into a cell building colony and they mostly raise really nice queen cells. And I think the, the idea that those, um, those cells have never been, those larvae rather, have never been touched by, by a tool or by a uh, human hand is quite important. I think it's uh, something that makes um, the raising of queens somewhat easier and somewhat nicer, nicer for the bees. Uh, just that little extra less interference. Of course we know that timing is everything with queen rearing and uh, queens wait for no man so what you don't want is one queen coming out before the others and breaking down all the cells and killing all the other queens so a way of preventing that is to use these things which are known uh, as hair roller cages for obvious reasons that's what they look like and the reason that I've got this cell bar arranged as it is is because I can when, uh, when the queen cell is sealed and no further activity is required in terms of feeding, I can pop these a hair roller cage over each sealed queen cell. And again, this is one of those things, uh, they don't always fit as planned, but this one does. And you, you could say so you rotate the, this bottom bar out and give them a hair roller cage like that. So the queen, the, the virgin queen in this case is going to emerge into the cell, sorry, into this cage rather than directly into the hive, which means that you can actually, um, you've got a bit of a, about it, you know, a couple of days grace really uh, for your queens to emerge and not uh, kill each other. And you can put these hair roller cages on at any point after the cell's sealed. So anytime after day nine, it's safe to do that. I generally put queens cells out to mating nukes on day 14 counting day zero as the day that the egg was laid and uh, that's you know a couple of days before they hatch and it's usually safe to move them at that point but this is a really good precaution if you're not sure that you're going to be able to get to them on day 14 this is a great way of doing it and uh, you generally buy these as a set so you get the hair oil cage the cell cup and the base um, as a set and I would buy them you know in at least um, bundles of 10 you can buy them on eBay from various places quite cheaply but do as I said before get a set that actually fits your queen cup so it might be a good idea to get all those get the cups the hair roller cages and the bases and everything from the same supplier personally I recommend um, a chap called Simon the beekeeper who's based in the Midlands somewhere I think Stratford and uh, it, this is in the UK of course um, he, he doesn't pay me to say this but I've always had good service from him and his prices are good and he supplies original Nico equipment so if you're in the UK Simon the beekeeper good man to go to um, right so that's the system then you've got the cage here's the laying cage and you got all those little cell cups in there Queen goes in the laying cage she lays the eggs and then when they hatch, now I, I tend to take them out on day four and I count day zero as the day that the eggs are actually laid. So um, she won't necessarily lay on the day that you put her in the cage. In fact, I found that almost, almost always she doesn't in my case. It may not be the same for other people. Um, in my case, she doesn't necessarily lay on the day that you put her in the cage. It could be one, two or even three days later. In this particular case, in this hive, uh, she's been in there, what's today? It's Monday today. I put her in there on Friday. So she's already been in there 
Saturday, Sunday and today, yeah, pretty much three days. She still hasn't laid, but she was, remember I was using the introduction part of the cage. It probably took them at least a day to chew through that little block of sugar. So I'm guessing she may have been released maybe late Saturday, maybe early Sunday. She's really only been in that cage for probably about a day. So I'm going to give her another day before I look again and then if she still hasn't laid I'll certainly give her another day and I'll basically leave her in there until she starts laying I think because I really want some eggs off that queen. Okay so day four from, uh, from the egg so that's three days as an egg one day hatched that's the time to put the cells um, into these cell holders and put them into your cell builder colony which we'll deal with in another video. An ecosystem love it. Um, while we've got the camera running a couple of other things I can show you. This I discovered very recently. This is a, a Chinese made push-in cage. They're less than two pounds each or in fact about one pound forty something I think on eBay at the moment and it's um, I couldn't quite figure out what it was to start with from the illustration but it turns out that it's actually a double cage and it's got lots of little sliding bits but it's got this kind of green fork thing this allows you to use you could theoretically use it to cage hang on let's get that in you could theoretically use it <laughs> I'll say theoretically because clicking the thing together eh, isn't quite as easy as it could be um, okay well you can see the principle anyway with a bit more fiddling I can get that in place but that central cone there we go divides the cage into two and each side's got its own little door little hatchway thing the idea is that you can introduce a queen and you wouldn't obviously introduce two queens to the same hive but you can use it for isolating queens but you can use it with one queen this is what I've done forget the central thing just pop one queen in there and clip it on the comb over emerging brood uh, and also overlapping some honey or open nectar so there's some food there as well. The idea being that the queen, you're introducing a new queen remember, um, the, the bees that are emerging from their comb will never have met a queen other than the one that they meet as they emerge obviously. So as far as they're concerned the queen that's in this cage is their queen and always will be so they will be completely loyal to her and the other bees that are around the cage and can't get into it um, will also tend to be influenced by the fact that she's already been accepted by one set of bees now it's also got these little slidey things here now I'm reckoning and I haven't really measured these to be honest but I'm reckoning that they can be opened as a means of letting workers in through there that looks like you know worker size um, keeps the queen in but lets workers through and right at the end there there's a bit that's a bit wider which I guess is meant for letting the queen out but obviously you can just unplug this from the um, from the comb when you're ready so yeah I've used this several times and totally successful so far no problems at all the bees always seem to accept the queen um, that's been accepted under a under a cage like this so there you go that's one thing and this is another type of cage which I've used quite a lot as well this is an introduction cage an alternative way of doing it you fill this tube here with queen candy which is as I say a hard version of fondant you pop the queen in there and you close the cage like that and then you close that little cap thing there and that means that the only way into that cage uh, certainly the only way out for the queen and the only way in for other bees is down that tube which is plugged with sugar and so they gradually eat their way through there and release the queen. Uh, meanwhile the queen's in here she has got an area here which is completely enclosed from the outside so she can't be got at as it were by bees when she's in this bit uh, but they can feed her through these little holes here and this is also I've used this a number of times for introducing queens totally reliable um, I have found so far anyway um, queen, the, the bees eat through here release the queen everybody's happy but you can 
see what's going on, which is quite important. If you place this correctly in the hive, uh, on the tops of frames or using polynukes, um, as you'll see in another video, you can place it under the uh, plastic queen, um, what are we talking about? The plastic cover for the feeder. You can place her under there and actually see what the bee's response to her is. So there we go. Some interesting bits of kit.